winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. presents. <laughs> Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. I'm back in the lab room. It's Tuesday. Much like yesterday, I don't have a lot of time. The draft is really consuming me and draining every ounce of time that I have available. But I had to come. I was prompted to do an episode today of In the Lab Room because just like yesterday, there's something big that I feel like I have to talk about. Yesterday, it was the Revis trade. Today, the Jacksonville Jaguars unveiled their new uniforms and I want to know what you guys think. I think that the helmets are awesome. The jersey, to me, leaves a little bit to be desired. I'm not really that blown away by the actual jerseys themselves. The black one, to me, isn't that bad, but the white one, I could really do without. But look, the helmets, those are state-of-the-art right there. I like the helmets. Those are clean. Those are crispy. I like those a lot. Those are really groovy. I can get down with those helmets. Uh, the Nike group really did a great job on the helmets. The jerseys, for me, they're okay. I guess they're an upgrade over the plain Jacksonville Jaguars jersey that used to be in existence. But for me, the new jerseys, they're okay. But if you haven't had a chance to take a look at them, here they are. So, I want to know what you guys think. If you watch this video, leave a comment down. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the jersey. The NFL and Nike have partnered together, of course, and we saw what they did with the Seattle Seahawks jersey. That was a home run. I think this is more of a double for me. The, the helmet alone is a triple, but the jersey for me kind of brings it back down to a double. Um, how do you feel about this? Also, the Minnesota Vikings will be unveiling new jerseys, so I want to see what those are going to look like. That's going to be closer toward the draft when we see the new Vikings jersey. The Dolphins have a new logo, so they're supposed to have some kind of tweaks with their jerseys. It's kind of been leaked, but I want to wait till the official jersey has been shown before I start going down that road. But I like the way Nike is switching up these jerseys. I'd be anxious to see what other improvements Nike has with other teams when they do their uniforms over. All right, so let's talk about the draft. I want to designate this as the draft talk portion of this episode. Let's talk about the draft. It's getting ever so close, and we're less than three days away from the draft, and so everything's buzzing right now. I want to start with Geno Smith, and kudos to Geno Smith. I have to send him a kudos because he sent a very, very slight shot out at those who mocked him and those who spoke very badly of him during this process, calling him a undraftable quarterback, a guy that's going to drain the energy out of a quarterback room. They likened him to Aaron Brooks and Akili Smith. And look, it was one particular writer that did all of that. And there are others who think that he's not going to be a successful quarterback in this league. And he simply sent out a tweet that said, hey, I want to thank all of the so-called experts who said that I wouldn't make a good NFL quarterback and basically said that Thursday is going to be the biggest day of his life. And I think that was a very tastefully done jab at those who have been critics of his throughout this whole process. I think that some guys are way too harsh in their evaluation of these quarterbacks. Look, if you want to talk about how poor his decision-making is, 
how strong or lack thereof his arm is, fine. If you want to talk about him not possibly being the best fit for being a starting quarterback in his league, great. But do not attack the character of these young men. I think that sometimes some of these writers, some of these columnists, some of these experts go a little too far. And when you go and attack someone and their character. See, I don't have a problem with you attacking the player. Don't attack the person. And I thought that's what that particular writer did when he went after Geno Smith. And I really didn't like it a lot. I, I really didn't take too kindly to that. Because it's one thing to talk about a player and his performance on the field. It's a totally different issue and separate issue when you start bringing his character into question. As a man, as a person, don't deface my name. Don't drag my name through the dirt. You can talk about me and my play on the field all you like. Do not talk about me and my name as a person. Don't drag that through the mud. Because that's all I have at the end of the day. When someone says Geno Smith, if they want to call me a bad quarterback, fine. But at the end of the day, when someone says Geno Smith, the person, they need not think of the comments that you made about the person that I am. Because the football player and the person are two separate entities. Don't confuse the two. And I thought that some of the critics were doing that. Now again, what you do off the field can affect you adversely on it. But those are two totally separate entities. And I thought that Geno Smith handled it very tastefully on Twitter today with his comment. So that's the first thing I wanted to handle. Where is Geno Smith going to be drafted? I want to ask all of you, where is Geno Smith going to be selected? I'm kind of at a crossroads as to where Geno Smith will be selected. I don't think he's going to Buffalo at eight. A lot of people think that's going to be his landing spot. I don't think that's going to be it at all. I think the Bills want Ryan Nazib. It makes too much sense for the Bills to draft Ryan Nazib. So I'm going with that theory. So I don't think it's going to be eight. It could be Cleveland. I have Cleveland trading back to 11 or 12. I actually have Cleveland trading with Miami to 12. But it makes more sense for the Dolphins to trade for Brendan Albert with the Chiefs for a second round selection than it does to trade up to six with Cleveland to get an unknown commodity out of the draft. To me, it makes more sense for them to actually draft the rookie because it's going to cost you a lot less. And the ceiling is probably higher than it is for Brendan Albert. But because you spent so much money in free agency, if you're the Dolphins, you got to continue spending the money on veteran free agents, not young guys. If you want to win now and you want to get a new stadium, you got to put players on the roster that can help you win right now. And I'm not sure if the Dolphins are sold on one of these rookie tackles or not. So I can see them trading away their second round selection and getting Brendan Albert. And I can see the San Diego Chargers trading up to six and getting a tackle. They need one in the worst way. If the Browns trade back to 11, I can see them taking Geno Smith at 11. I really could. But where do you think Geno Smith is going to go? Because I'm really at a loss for where he's going to end up. Give me your thoughts. I, I would really love to hear from some of you guys on where you think Geno Smith is going to land. Also, I've been hearing about a few interesting trades that could happen during the draft. The first one that really sticks out to me like a sore thumb is the Minnesota Vikings possibly trading out of the first round. You know, they have two first round selections, 23 and 25. The Vikings could trade 25 to the Buffalo Bills, who would then select Ryan Nazar. That's a trade that I'm really hearing from league circles that could really happen. Who knows? That's a very interesting proposition because I think if the Vikings get their man at 23, then they'll be willing to trade 25. But if they don't get their man at 23, maybe they'll want to hold on to 25. I'm thinking that they want a middle linebacker at 23. They probably want Manti Teo at 23. Will they get him at 23? Who's to say? But if they get the linebacker at 23, I think they'll be willing to part with 25 because they need a receiver at 25. And trading back with the Bills, you're going to get a relatively high second-round draft pick in the second round. 
which would allow you to get one of the better receivers in the second round. And you'll pick up additional picks from the Bills for allowing them to move back into the first round. And so I think that's a smart move for the Vikings. It makes sense for the Bills. It almost makes too much sense for it to actually happen, but we'll see. So that's what it seems like is going on in draft land right now. I've also heard that the Denver Broncos might look to trade for a guy like Trent Cole from the Philadelphia Eagles. That could happen. You also look at another potential trade. Chris Ivory from the New Orleans Saints to the Jets who desperately need running back help after losing Sean Green to free agency. They could use at least two bodies at the running back position, could the Jets. And so a lot of different things could happen on draft day. Expect the unexpected when it comes to the NFL draft. I've been pretty much taught that over the years. And especially after the rookie wage scale, you can never tell what's going to occur in the NFL draft. And that's a touchdown. Go ahead and throw it up. I'm going to tackle this quick extra point. Stay tuned for the series that I'm putting together, the draft game. I'm trying to wrap it up before the draft actually commences. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Among other things, I will break down every team's draft after it happens. So I want you to tune back in for that as well. There's many ways to contact or view the show. There's Facebook. In the Lab Room is the Facebook page. Like me on Facebook. There's the Twitter page. At In the Lab Room is the Twitter handle. Follow me on Twitter. There is the YouTube page. Please subscribe if you have not already done so. The YouTube page is Louie T. L-O-U-I-E-T-E-E. -E -E. Subscribe to the page if you haven't already done so, please. And also, there's the inbox. In the lab room at gmail.com is the inbox if you want to send me a direct message. And that's going to do it for me today here in the lab room. I thank you for joining me. I want to see you back here, same time same place. And as always, have a good one. I might be back tomorrow. I may not. Either way, you'll see me sometime during this week, whether it be because of the draft or because something else happens and I have to show my face again. Either way, I'll see you then. Have a good one.